Um, so I'm Karen Gerard, and welcome to Marjorie May Broadhead's Meet the Mentor. And I'm going to read you just a brief um, introduction. And then we're going to have a quick 30 minute experience painting. So Marjorie loves art and she's always been drawn to color and painting is something she remembers wanting to do even as a child. The mystery of color, paint, lines and texture resonated with something deep inside of her and she knew it would be her language of choice. I love those words, language of choice. This feeling never left her and years later, Marjorie began to develop the skills needed to express herself with paint. On this track, that began. Elizabeth, could I get you to just um, mute yourself, please? Now, because she's going to take the whole. Let me just mute her there. There we go. Sorry. Um, Marjorie started taking art classes through Chinook Learning in Calgary, and she was hooked immediately. And this led to many more in person and online courses as she fully embraced the opportunity to learn more about her passion. In 2016, Marjorie became an active member of the Federation of Canadian Artists and was awarded signature status in July 2020 by the Federation in recognition of extraordinary achievement in the field of visual fine arts. Marjorie continues to love color and the freedom to use it in a loose and painterly fashion. She believes painting should be a fun, enjoyable, and a time of discovery. So bring your creative spirit to class and Marjorie will help you develop your ability to communicate with paint. And I can vouch for Marjorie's love of color. I did a full day color workshop with Marjorie and it really helped me a lot. Um, Marjorie is going to be starting a new emerging group on March 26th. It's going to be on the fourth Tuesday of the month from 5 till 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So that's about this time. And um, we would love to have you join us. And Marjorie, I'm going to ask you if you are ready to get going. I will spotlight you and all of you lovely people who are here watching, you are very welcome to ask questions along the way. So please interrupt and ask questions if you want to know more. Sure, I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna go in and spotlight you. See if I can find you. There you are. And Marjorie is doing a spring tulip painting for us. Okay. So Marjorie, you have uh, 11 people watching you here, just so you know. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So Marjorie's already toned her canvas. What did you use to tone your canvas with? I used magenta. Um, okay, so it's just a uh, magenta and then you drew on top of it with your chalk. And I see you drew your rule of thirds lines there to get your um, point of interest going. Yep. And did you have it gridded out when you drew it? Yep. I don't always do that, but you know, this is a demo, so I thought I'll just make it simple. Um, yeah, awesome. so, okay, go ahead. You go ahead and you can get started and we can chat as you go. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing to start with? Sure. So I decided tonight, I thought, oh my gosh, like what will I do? It's tulips. I need something bright in my life because it's like so cold. And I thought I actually wanted to try something that I typically do not do because I get bored fairly easily. And I thought I never put magenta in my background and I don't use my basic primary colors I just don't because there's just so much color there. And I thought, well, why don't I just try it out and see what it, what happens? And so I did do a test run yesterday. I'll show you the picture because I thought it can't be totally. Um, and I, I just pulled this up in 20 oh, wow. minutes. Beautiful. And 
I was so surprised because I wouldn't typically use these colors. I have um, a primary cyan. I have a pyro red and I have um, cad yellow light. Those are my three and then black and white. And so we're gonna see what we can do with these wild colors tonight. I like unexpected things to happen, so. <clears throat> Did you was... mix anything with your magenta or is that just straight magenta? That is the straight medium magenta. Okay, straight out of, the, out of the golden little, um, you know, it's just out of the tube. So magenta is one of the more transparent ones, I believe, is that correct? No, actually magenta is very opaque, which oh. I really like. It's like, you cannot see through. Okay, as opposed magenta. to Quinn magenta, then that's different. Yeah, Quinn magenta would be transparent. Okay. And yeah, the, um, just that pure magenta is a very opaque color. And I, I kind of like mixing my um, opaques and my, transparent because it just gives you a lot more liberty okay and i did forget one little thing i just gotta pull i gotta put, get a bit of medium here i'm just setting myself up so we'll have like 20 minutes and i don't mind guys if you ask me questions i don't mind at all it actually helps me to Know what to talk about. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when new Masters videos are added. Well, one of the things that I would love to talk about is your mentorship group, which uh, we are looking to get started. And um, what kind of medium are you using though first? Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm using Anova and it's a slow dry matte medium. Okay, so you're just using it's an extender. Yes, so that I don't. Paint. I do not dip my um, brush in water. I dip it in medium. Okay. So I use very little water, very very little water in any of my paintings. And that medium sort of helps it to blend more. I assume sort of um, gives it more like the oil. Well, it just gives you me the consistency. Then I have control of the consistency, right? Okay. Of the paint. Okay, so what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna do my little flowers first. Um, and typically I would have on the, in class, I would have all this set up so that you guys could see my palette. So I have, but I didn't do that tonight because this is just a quick little demo. So I didn't set it all up, but I have a two camera um, thing. So I you like had, sorry, you had said this was going to be an experience painting, a 30 minute experience painting. What does that mean? Well, you never know what might happen, right? When you've got paint on your hand. <laughs> That's what I call an experience because you don't know. I mean, you put paint on that brush and is it actually going to happen the way you want it? Like I like to have work with fairly thick paint I like to work fairly loosely. Um, my lines are there as a general guideline. I don't stick to any real plan. I, they're just there to give me a little bit of guidance. Okay, and I noticed that you are not going from dark to light. You are going through. Well, I'm basically putting on my lights right now. Are those going to be your lightest lights? Yes. Okay. And this is just my first layer. My flowers typically get like, I don't know, many, many layers. And so this is 20 minutes. You're not gonna get through all the layers. You're just gonna see a little bit of the, of the process. What I can do in 20 minutes. 
what you can do in 20 minutes probably takes me three hours. <laughs> so tell me what you think the difference is, oh, that's pretty, between um, a course versus a mentorship. Well, I think a course is me showing you step-by-step step what you're doing. A mentorship is you asking me questions and me guiding you through to get you what you where you want to go. So it's more personal. It's much more um, tailored to your needs. And I think that's the beauty of mentorship. And because in your mentorships, I assume that you still do demos and things? Actually, I do a lot of demoing in my mentorships. My groups tend to love the demos. And so, yeah, they get a, they usually get a demo every week. We love demos. Everyone I loves love demos. I love watching people and paint. So as we go through the demos, we're talking about composition. We're talking about color. We're doing all those things as we go through. And so it's sort of a learn as you go. Um, yeah. So usually the first hour is talk, you know, you're talking, figuring out, doing um, a critique of lesson. The second half is a demo. And how do you generally do your critiques for your groups? You know, I'm not, I wouldn't say critique is my real strength. I would say critique is, um, like, I, I like to teach, I'm, I'm kind of gentle with the, with the critique, because I think if you're, um, like, I'll show you where you want to go. And if you, and if you say, look, I want you to give it to me straight, I don't mind doing that. But I don't want anyone to feel discouraged about hearing something that might not, you know. So that's sort of how I do critique. And when you do your critique, are you focusing on sort of what you were covering in the group lesson? Or would you be willing to focus also on sort of if I'm working on a project for something to say, what can I do to make this better, even if it's something that we haven't covered yet? Absolutely, because that's why we were in mentorship. Mentorship is putting your where your needs go first. That's the top priority. Like if it's something that I, you know, that you want to learn. Well, Karen, you would be, you are the mentor. You're like the navigator. So you can control all that. You can say to the group, say, what do you want Mark to teach next week? Or next yeah. month. Yeah, and we would be doing that in the mid month, generally. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then you get a hold of me and away we go, right? That's how I've done it in my other groups. Yeah, that's it's how we have been doing it. So that's awesome. And we also sort of, if people have burning questions, you know, I ask them to bring them to the group as well. Sometimes I will gather them up if they've got questions along the way. Do you check into your group along the way as well? Do you have any chats and things going that way? Oh, absolutely. Like I, if people ask me, they can send me, the best way to really get a hold of me is just Instagram me. And then I'm always on Instagram and I, we could set up a little group maybe in there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm always there to, give you some input. I've done critiques for people in the middle of the month. Like, I don't mind. That's wonderful. I know that uh, a lot of us sort of get going on a painting and we're feeling pretty good about something and then you get stuck. Um, do you have exercises and things for helping people get unstuck? <laughs> my, the best way I say to get unstuck is to get out a piece of paper and go like crazy. So just like go paint. And, and just go paint because you're going to learn so much. So I like Fast and Furious, quite frankly. I like, it teaches you faster. You get where you're going quicker than spending 30 hours on one painting. So, yeah. 
that's sort of how I that's sort of how I deal with that. I hear something else in the background. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> Marjorie and I were on a few minutes ago or a few minutes early and whatever we were saying, we got fireworks on our <laughs> Zoom. So I'm not sure if there's just something funny happening with mine because I hear things every so often too. <laughs> so Marjorie, you do a lot of floral. Yes. You do mostly floral. Um, what if people want to do things like landscapes and things? What Tell me about what you would do with that with your group. Well, you, I've done landscape. I do landscape. It's not my um, area of expertise. So if you come in here in a floral class and you say, I want to do landscape, I'd probably say, um, yeah. What you're going to learn in my class is more freedom like you're going to learn um i like loose paintings i don't like everything planned i never know so, a step by number yeah approach. so are you considering your mentorship a floral painting um or is it something that people who are doing florals and landscapes and things would be able to learn from well i'm sure they I mean, I have taken so many classes and I have to say, I take landscape classes and I can apply those to my florals. There is, to make yourself rounded, I think you should try everything. And you can use anything that I do in this, you can use it in your landscape, absolutely. But it's not specifically on landscape, but you would definitely benefit from it. I think the biggest thing that I got from the course with you was the colors and just sort of understanding my values more um, and how to do starting with just a couple of values and working our way up to how many colors you can actually make from just a couple. And you're yeah. only using three colors there and look at all the colors you're getting. <laughs> well, yeah, but you've got the whole range, right? I mean, I yeah. can, you've got, I've got so much color here. It's crazy. It, it can get out of hand pretty quick, but, um, but you're right. Like I've only got three tubes out. So. I'm just watching your brush strokes. It's uh, really interesting how you work your brush with the different colors too, without um, blending them together that way. You've got very light brush strokes there. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I'd sort of let the paint slide across the, the paper, I guess, it's just sort of guide it. Did you um do you do your own reference photos? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So you went and bought yourself tulips for this? Well, I did this one actually. Actually, these are silk. You can see that it's got the little price. Oh, thing okay. <laughs> like I I will um I did actually have some nice tulips a week ago, but they they died. Um but I had this reference that I had used um, that I found on my camera from a, a few years back. Nice. So what other things besides um, painting would we be doing in the mentorship group? What kinds of things do you uh, talk about in there? Well, anything that's related, we can talk about product, we can talk about technique, we can talk about anything that is currently a question for you. So marketing and Instagram and taking photographs and things like that? Well, we could do that. Absolutely. I, like, I don't know piles about Instagram, but I do. I have a healthy following on Instagram and I can talk about that. 
I think the other thing is that we can all help each other with different things like that. So I just really want to make sure people have an idea of the different kinds of things that you would cover besides painting in the group. Yeah, well, whatever people would want to discuss, I'm willing to tackle. What I don't know, I'll learn. <laughs> or we'll learn from each other. Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone out there have any questions for Marjorie? There's lots of people here, but it's a very quiet group. <laughs> Do you always use a limited palette? I often use a limited palette. And I'll tell you why. I I like to do fairly loose um, painting. And I find if I have my color planned, then I have that to fall back on. So that it, not everything goes crazy all at the you know what I mean? I just have some control in the, the process. So yes, I typically do work with a limited palette. Most of the time. And I use, no. I use my color wheel. It's my most frequently looked at um, little thing to plan it out. I like my color plans. I want to know what that color is going to do to me for me. And so I do, I use the color wheel and I let it guide me. Do you turn your um, paintings into black and white uh, pictures to sort of get an idea for your um, values? Yep, I do that. I sometimes will turn my canvas and paint upside down because that guides me to my composition, if my composition is working or not. So I do all sorts of things like that. Yep. How does turning it upside down help you with your composition? Because you can see, like we all paint a little bit on an angle. And when you throw things upside down, you see it from a different perspective. It's the same as having a mirror behind your work. Some people have a mirror behind and they look at it through the mirror. Okay. I always take pictures. I find that I can see things a lot better when I have a photo. Yeah, but I like painting upside down. And if I can't find out what it is that is a problem area, it usually tells me when I put it upside down. Literally, it will show you. It's not something I've ever thought of. Do you leave a lot of your, um, I say, I'm trying to tell here, do you leave a lot of your underpainting showing as well? It's, are you going to leave it as you go through or do you find that it gets mostly covered when you do your- oh, it'll, It's always gets covered. It's it's going, it just depends on whether I have enough time to get it through tonight. Everything- So you, you always cover it. I know some people leave it so it almost gives an outline through there. I mean, that is a technique. I don't typically do that. I, I have painted that way, um, but that's not, that's not my route. That's not my regular way, but there is, um, I have done it. Absolutely, I have. Um, do you do work on helping people sort of find their own style as well? Well, absolutely, because I think the biggest deal about it is not to try to copy someone, is to find your own voice. I like doing that by actually just working fast and furious and putting on a timer and working quickly. And yeah, I think it, it comes out, it just shows up. Because you're, you're working so quickly, you're not, your intuition is coming into play big time. Yeah, I guess that if uh, if I was working faster, that's true. I wouldn't have time to think about it. Um, some people actually do do sort of uh, 10 and 20 minute pictures, don't they? Just to, I think there was a 
class that somebody went to where it was 10, 10 20 minute pictures. So you just timer change. Oh yeah, absolutely. I spend I spend a lot of time doing that. Um, when I'm in process mode, which is I want to learn something, I do it as quickly as I can, and that helps me not get stuck. Because, and then you go back and you compare what you've what you've done before, and you can see from your own work where you need to improve. Okay, just to give you a time, it's 525 your time. Okay. So as we're getting there, uh, what, what kind of things do you focus on? You put your lightest lights in first. Then um, I get my darks, yeah. And did, did you put your darkest darks in at that time too? So, because Often, a lot of people leave them till the end. Well, I'm. Let me think here. What am I doing? I got a little bit carried away with my darks. It might be a little bit dark. I need to go back in right now and get my flowers. That's what I'm going to look at right now because I don't have my flowers done. I think my background. It shows a little bit of variation, not as much as I want. Um, I don't know if I'll have time to fix that or not. No, in the 20 minute things. painting, yeah, those are things that you can do in the next layer. Yeah, like this is just the start of a painting. It's not, uh, there'd be about three or four layers on top of this. So you're not getting the whole benefit. I mean, acrylic is the most amazing um, medium because you can do work in layers. I love working in layers. Do you ever do texture in your work? Yeah, I've done, I do texture, yeah. Just depends on what day and what I'm doing. And I guess, again, when you're thinking painting loose, you're not totally true. You're using your reference as a idea, but you can make changes to your reference as you go too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does anyone else have any questions for Marjorie before our time is up here? Do you use the same brush? Sometimes I do, sometimes I do. Yeah, I very seldom will pick up a smaller brush. This is my one inch go-to. I buy it at Michael's cheap because I wreck them really. Wreck them. Yeah. Thank you. What is it that you're painting on? I am painting on, what am I painting on? I'm just one of those canvas, pads okay it's um uh, let me see here it's a Cranston 140 pound watercolor oh it's watercolor uh, paper okay yeah so i i like to use these because they're it's cheap and it's easy to to manage so do you mount those later on a wood board or what do you do with them you definitely can, absolutely can. I mean, you can, um, you could actually take one of these and just frame it behind glass. It doesn't need the glass, but um, because it's on paper, you have to do something with it to stabilize it. So you either have to glue it onto a board or else you have to um, put it behind glass. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, it is at the 4.30 time and um, you got a lot done in 30 minutes while we were talking or in 20 minutes while we were talking. Um, it's looking quite beautiful. I'm going to just unspotlight you.
so that just you wanted can, to see everybody. Yeah, <laughs> so that you can see everybody. Did that work? Oh, I just did it. I think I just put it into gallery view. Oh, on mine I did anyway. Okay. So that Actually, everyone can see. Oh, and Aid's got oh, a question there. Sorry, I do have a question. Just about your backgrounds. How do you resolve the background without, you know, getting too much detail in there, but also still making it interesting? Do you have kind of a tactic that you approach your backgrounds? Well, backgrounds can be like, I typically will do like four or five layers on my background and I don't make the decision the first time around. I make the decision as I go. I want to see, typically I want to see some variation in all different quadrants. So I don't want it to look solid. And so that's something that I would, um, our gradation is in there. Um, and some color variants all the way around. That's what I look for typically. Okay. Do you varnish uh, when you're doing it on the paper? No, I because I typically just put them in a big, because I do a lot of these for demos and stuff. I just got a big box in, the, in my room and I just stick them in there. <laughs> That's what I do with them. Yep. Oh, beautiful. So you have a whole bunch that you could be putting out there for the art and found this week. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah, I have. I have buckets, loads. I have just scads of this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for spending the time and showing us this today. I just want to remind people in case you're interested, Marjorie has an emerging group starting on March 26th. It's going to be on the fourth Tuesdays of the month from five until seven. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you Beautiful work. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. I'd love to see you in my class. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank just you. looked you up on Instagram, so I'm following you now. I love your flowers. <laughs> Beautiful flowers, so, yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thanks. I'm going to close us now. Bye. Bye-bye.